أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, peace be upon everyone who's watching now or in the future. My name is Kenny Balmer, this is Consider This TV, where truth is made clear from falsehood, and I do bear witness there's no God other than Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final servant and seal of all prophets. Uh, we're, we're going live uh, at an uh, unusual time today, but uh, we're trying to accommodate a brother that's backstage, we have a special guest coming on, and this brother has... Um, We've been trying to coordinate a time for the last three weeks or so to discuss the topic why Islam, and uh, this is it, it is very very important topic. And matter of fact, the brother's going to come on and talk about that. Um, and so, uh, before we get into that um, and bring the brother on, um, I want to make mention that I will be uh, having a somewhat a debate discussion. I'm not sure we're going to actually have a moderated debate or just a discussion with George Bogue again on Friday uh, on the topic. Uh, is the God of the Bible the God of the Quran? And uh, this is a, a topic that he wanted to address with me, so we're going to talk about that. Also on March the 20th, let me backtrack. No, it's going to be March the 18th, actually. We moved the date. March 18th for people in the United States, March 19th for people in uh, Australia. I'm going to be debating uh, Samuel Green, and we're going to be discussing the topic of slavery. Uh, Christianity versus Islam. So uh, be on the lookout for that. You'll see ads for that coming up uh, soon, inshallah. So uh, again, the brother wanted to, to come on to talk about the topic why Islam is a very, very important topic, uh, obviously, because uh, we, we certainly believe that Islam is the answer for everything that we face in this life. And uh, so the, I want to commend the brother that's backstage um, for his passion and desire to want to come on and talk about this topic. So Let's bring him on. Uh, there he is. Assalamu alaikum, brother. His name Salam is Mushtaba Ruzbahani. Assalamu alaikum, brother Mushtaba. Brother, Salam. again, thank you for wanting to come on to talk about this. It's very important. And so may Allah bless you for your efforts and your intentions and preparation and, and so forth. And for anyone that's guided to any any goodness from it. So, um, so tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from and uh, how long you've been Muslim, if you were born into Islam and so forth. Uh, tell us about this. Yes, uh, salam alaikum to everybody, and thank you, <clears throat> brother Kerry. Thank you very much for giving me this uh, opportunity, of course. And uh, it's very uh, a pleasure talking to you and uh, uh, your listeners. Um, and uh, inshallah, uh, I'm trying to deliver a great message today. <clears throat> um, yes, I'm I'm born in a Muslim family. Um, okay, and uh, I'm originally from Iran, and. Uh, in 1987, I moved from Iran because of the situation in Iran, my country. And then I came to Sweden. Uh, I've been living in Sweden uh, now more than 33 years. Mm. And at the age of 25, I started to think about existence of God. Uh, I was thinking, does God exist? And then after a few days, because of lack of knowledge, I decided that no, God doesn't exist. <laughs> because mm -hmm. I don't have to see any uh, evidences. But the, the thing is that the evidences were there, but I had uh, little knowledge to see those evidences. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, in the future, I mean, after many years, when I learned other things, I traveled and so on, and then read different things, then I re start to realize that I was wrong. And I realized that the Abrahamic religion 
are religions of God, messages of God. Uh, and that he exists. And then I found Islam as the final message of God. And uh, I converted to Islam. But uh, I converted to Islam not because uh, God exists, not because Prophet Muhammad peace was the last messenger of God or messenger of God. I converted to Islam because I found the solution to every single problem we are facing on this planet in Islam. For me, uh, I say it everywhere as well. Doesn't matter for me. Doesn't matter if uh, Ganesha was God or is a piece of wood. For me, doesn't matter if Jesus was son of God or he is God or whatever. For me, the most important is what this Almighty God can do for us. We have a lot of problems on this planet: persecution, drugs, war, all these bad deeds that happening on this planet. I say that we are living in a jungle with the jungle roots. We are like animals, but uh, modern. So the strongest one get the most and the weakest one get nothing or little, you know? Mm -hmm. So the almighty God should be able to guide us to a right way, to a better world. Uh, as he, we, have, we have asked him 1400 years every day, show me the right way. So has he shown us the right way or we ha he has shown us, but we haven't understood it. This is what I think that he has shown us, but majority of my fellow Muslims haven't understood that right way. What is the right way? Okay, and that's the topic that I would like to uh, bring up. Uh, you know, you remember that uh, uh, you had this uh, brother, uh, Adam, I think, uh, he was talking to God and so on. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you were talking to him very long time. And when I came after a few minutes, he said, oh, it's late, I have to go. Because I asked him, what is the message he has given to you that he forgot yeah. to give you Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because yeah. I found out and I know that the final message of God, which is the solution to every single problem you are facing on this planet, came with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we don't need no more any more new messages. We just have to understand it, okay? For example, I see that there are uh, people who claim that they are prophets, uh, that there are many of them. Yes, and, uh, yes. you know, they, they say, because um, the final message that I'm going to talk to, uh, to you about it is in Islam. And unfortunately, um, because my, uh, most of my fellow Muslims haven't understood it, that's why not only the world, but Muslim countries are in such a bad situation, unfortunately. But because, uh, again, I say that they haven't understood the final message of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the, the right one. We ask him to show us the right way. So we have to know first what is the right, the wrong way. The wrong way is we are the way we are living uh, today. Prostitution, drugs, corruption, um, uh, war, uh, dictatorship, all these bad deeds. All of them have a source. According to our Abrahamic religion, all of them have one source. And Abrahamic religion says that it is the Satan, the devil, mm -hmm. okay? That the devil is the source. Are we able to get rid of the devil? Yes, we are able to get rid of the devil. I'm going to explain about that. First of all, we have to know what is this devil? Who is this devil? Is that angel or it is something else? Is that, uh, or uh, Jim who was taken as, a, as an angel or it's something else? I'm going to, um, uh, locate the Satan for, for you very, very uh, easily, okay? According to Quran, uh, Satan spread poverty among us and lead us to prostitution and all bad deeds, um, okay? So power of Satan is uh, poverty. Without poverty, Satan cannot uh, guide us to, to bad deeds. Uh, there are lots of, uh, uh, what is it, evidences that... Uh, uh, what is it? Like uh, hadiths as well, that uh, Prophet peace upon him says that when poverty comes in from one door, Iman, belief, goes out from another door. Okay? Mm -hmm. So everything is connected to that. Now, um, according to Abrahamic religion, if I steal something, it's the Satan who fooled me, guided me to steal something. Now I want to uh, give you an example. You, Brother Kenny, you are, uh, let's say that you are uh, owner of a grocery. I'm hungry, I don't have money, uh, my children are hungry, I have to come and steal something from your grocery. I come and steal something and go. There was a Satan, Satan fooled me. 
I came and stole something from your grocery. But imagine, brother Kelly, that you live in a world where money doesn't exist, everything is free, we share everything with each other, we love one another, and I come to the grocery, it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all live and work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We get rewards instead of money. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then I come there and take whatever I need. I say, God bless you, Brother Kenny. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. And I go. In the second picture, Satan didn't exist. But the yeah. first picture, Satan existed. So what was the Satan in the first picture was the money. And money is the source of a system we call it capitalism today. Okay? In this capitalist system, 1% of the world population, they own $110 trillion. It is 50% of the total capital of the planet, while hundreds of millions of people are living on $1 a day. 50% of the total, um, the total population of the world, they own less than half a percent of the total capital of the planet. There, these, are, these numbers are <laughs> maybe confusing, yeah? Which I have counted, uh, I have counted is like uh, $1.7 trillion belong to 50% of the world population. Hmm. But $110 trillion belong to 1% of the world population, okay? Hmm. Yes, and these hundreds of, this, even that half a percent is not shared to, in, uh, among these uh, 50%. Even there, hundreds of millions of people live on $1 a day, uh, others a little bit more, and so on. So according to uh, Quran, Shaitan spread poverty among you and lead you to prostitution and all, all bad deeds. So in this fact, who is spreading poverty among us is that 1%. Is this system that allows 1% of the world population gain $110 trillion and the same organization that uh, gave this statistic said that by, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 years, they will own 99% of the total capital of the, of the mm -hmm. planet. And they don't stop there. They want more and more. What they do, they make coup d'etat here, there, you know, in my, my home country, Iran. 1953, we had a democratic elected prime minister called Dr. Mossadegh. UK and USA brought him down and they brought a dictator uh, a regime called Shah in power so that they can take more uh, oil and then sell us weapons and sell us their, their products and so on. After we made a revolution, they created for us a more and more satanic government, which, uh, you know, these ayatollahs that destroyed my country. Another example I can give you is that uh, my home country, uh, I can give you this example that uh, before revolution, my father was making an average salary. It was an average salary, $500 a month. And we could buy a, a house, we could buy a car, we could buy things, you know. We were living okay. And the, there was a prostitution, drugs, uh, all bad deeds happened as well. But after the revolution, now 42 years after, one dollar is, uh, that, sorry, at that time, one dollar was seven Iranian currency to a month. Uh, Iranian currency was seven two months, one dollar. Now, 42 years later, one dollar is 30,000 uh, Iranian two months, 30,000. Mm -hmm. And average salary is 75 to 100 dollars. Average salary, so 75 percent of Iranian population living below the poverty line. The poverty line is 10 million Iranian two months, which salary is around two and a half million. You know how much below and then crime, everything, brother, has increased a thousand times. It doesn't mean that shaitan became stronger there. It means that a more satanic regime took the power and spread poverty among Iranian people and led them to prostitution, drugs. We have four million, officially four million drug users and Iranian regime spread among them you know, uh, drugs so that they don't revolt against this regime and so on. So uh, another example is that farmers of Afghanistan, they produce 90% of the world opium. 90% of the world opium is produced in, in Afghanistan. Why? Because potatoes and tomatoes, if they produce that, gives them maybe five or 10 cents per kilo. 
if they can sell it. Yeah, it's not sure that even they can sell it. It can get bad and they have to throw it away. So what drives them to produce opium is that they can sell it hundreds of dollars per kilo. They can keep it even years. It doesn't get bad. So in Sweden, where I'm living, remember that Afghanistan farmers are Muslims. And it is haram in Islam to produce opium. But farmers of in, uh, Sweden, they produce zero gram of drugs. Why? Because the government take care of them, okay? They are well off. They don't need to, uh, you know, to uh, produce drugs. They produce potatoes and tomatoes and the government buy from them more expensive, sell it cheaper. You know, it's a system here that they don't have to, be, uh, you know, uh, struggle so that they can continue and produce, okay? So what, and they are here, majority of them are atheists. What uh, why Satan cannot uh, influence these farmers of Sweden, but can influence farmers of Afghanistan? Obviously, it is the poverty. They are poor. They have to put food on their table. Okay. So now what is the solution to this? When we know that the wrong way is the way we are living, prostitution, drugs. You can name, it, na name any problems we are facing on this planet, big problems, that is not connected to money. Everything is connected to money. Uh, tobacco companies, they kill 5 million people every year. I don't know if you have heard this. 5 million people every year die from tobaccos on the planet. I have counted, it's like 33 nuclear bomb, Hiroshima nuclear bomb. 33 wow. explode every year on this planet and we don't hear it. Why? Mm -hmm. Because tobacco companies, they want to make billions of dollars and they target there was feminist uh, organization who complained to United Nations that they have targeted women. They try to, uh, you know, persuade them that cigarette make you sexy and sleep, okay? So that they, they also become smokers, so that they make money. So <clears throat> if this system, brother, doesn't exist, the system of gaining money, becoming richer and richer, you think that for a second, you think that they will produce a single cigarette. They will not do that. Do you think over a million people die from alcohol every year because there are so many companies, they want to sell whiskey, vodka, I don't know, brandy, all these you know, mm -hmm. uh, different uh, brands they want to sell. It. If they cannot sell it for a second, you think that they will uh, produce all this alcohol and give it for free? No. For, uh, I mean, there are... Uh, this um, in Latin America, okay? I don't know, they are farmers or whatever. They go deep in the forest and they produce cocaine and they uh, smuggle it all the way to USA as well. Why? Because of money. If money doesn't exist, they will not never do that, okay? So we stand always towards Mecca and say, show me the right way. The wrong way is the way we are living in this jungle with the jungle rule. So what is the right way obviously is opposite to this, a way that none of these things happens. Has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us this way or not? Yes, he has shown us. But why fellow Muslims don't understand it, that the right way, why we are not uh, standing towards the sky? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm everywhere. Anywhere you turn, I'm there, okay? So why I don't stand towards uh, Washington or Tokyo and say, show me the right way. Why exactly towards Mecca? Because when we go there, we are all equal there, brother. That's right. That's right. We have this dress of Ahram, which is two uh, clothes of uh, the, the material is also decided cotton. It doesn't have to be silk or anything else. You cannot even sew it so that you are not different. You cannot wear any jewelry, anything that you are, you cannot even have a, you know, a hat or something. So you have to be exactly equal, no rich, no poor. And we stand towards that and say, show me the right way because the wrong way he has shown us, he has told us that is the way of shaitan and shaitan is the one who spread poverty among you. If capitalism doesn't exist, poverty will not exist because poverty is opposite to wealth. It is the opposite word to wealth. Wealth doesn't exist. Capitalism, uh, sorry, poverty will not exist. That 1% of the population of the world, you know, they produce, uh, they, they try, even this, uh, for example, the, uh, we see time to time in USA, somebody take uh, so many guns and then go kill people in, 
you know, in schools or in that guy in uh, Las Vegas, he killed 52 people, you know. Why we don't have such things in Sweden? Why they, they uh, don't put this gun control? I say that they have to get rid of all guns, okay? But at least these gun controls, because some weapon cartels, they lose billions of dollars. That's why they don't allow it, okay? And this second, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, commandments, uh, you call it, or uh, amendments, yeah? Second amendments mm -hmm. in USA is just, uh, uh, something uh, an excuse to to continue this business okay otherwise we don't uh, use weapons in sweden we don't sell it in supermarkets here and we don't need it people you know people don't not don't need to defend themselves it is like uh, um, i don't know things something that has happened thousands of years ago and then you say that uh, we still today need it okay so anyway this is uh, absolutely wrong that uh, 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 what is it that they they want to sell these weapons to people that's why they uh, people uh, take a gun uh, i mean uh, i was talking about this uh, the the mecca so when we go there as well we go to uh, mecca we seven times we go around the symbol of that equality and we say i accept it i accept it then we have to go and reject the opposite of it we were equal and we said i accept it then we reject the opposite of it, which was, he said it there that it, it is the one who spread poverty among you. The Satan, we reject it, okay? That Satan is just a symbol, a symbol of that inequality, the system of inequality, the system that spread poverty among us. So that's why we reject it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and uh, one thing is that I have, um, people say that if you go to Mecca, uh, do Hajj, then uh, all your sins will disappear, okay? You will be washed from all your sins. Yes, but if you come and change, if you say, because you go there and promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something, that I will, I accept this equality, I will reject this inequality, and I will sacrifice for it. Not that you come back again to go to the same life, fool people, and so on. No, nothing will change none of your sins will disappear as long as you continue the same life you did before, okay? It has to change. You have to come and send, fight for that uh, demand that he told you to, you know, he doesn't... Uh, I was talking to a Quranist because he was saying that, uh, uh, no, we don't need, uh, what is it? We don't need um, uh, hadith. Of course, uh, I'm myself against fabricated hadiths, but I accept uh, authentic hadiths, okay? Sure, but sure, they sure. reject everything. I said, if we reject everything, then when we go to Mecca, do we need to dress the dress of Ahram because it's not in Quran? Do we need to reject the, the Satan? Uh, he said that, no, we don't need to dress that one. I said, then why do we go to Mecca? He said that we, it is, uh, you know, we go there for, uh, Hajj means uh, discussion, debate. We go yeah. there for debate. I for said, debate. Is, right? yes, for debate. Yeah, his name is, uh, uh, Professor Edip, uh, uh, I have the, the 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 what is it? The debate in uh, on my uh, YouTube channel, of course. And uh, I said that excuse me, uh, a farmer from Afghanistan has to travel thousands of kilometers all the way to 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 Mecca to debate with somebody from Africa. They don't even understand each other. No, uh, no. I mean, so uh, yes. This is um, uh, what I, I told him that this, uh, but the, the meaning of going to Mecca is this: to go there and promise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that I will fight and sacrifice. That that sheep that we sacrifice is the symbol of our most precious one, Ishmael. That I'm ready to sacrifice my Ferrari, my Lamborghini, my private, you know, jet, my palace, if necessary, for that, your demand. That's why we have to submit to his demand, because if he created us like animals, and we live in a jungle with the animal rules, but he tried to guide us to a human world, a world where we sacrifice for each other, okay? We give up this, uh, you know, luxury life just because, you know, I want to live in a palace or in a, you know, have a luxury life. Then I don't care that Sweden, such a nice country, uh, make uh, a landmine and sell it to other countries that children, they lose their legs on the landmine, even years after the conflict. 
just because they want to make money, okay? Some children here, they're in Africa, in, I don't know, in the Middle East, okay? They have to lose their children, uh, their legs, and they have to go, you know, with one leg or without leg, you know? You know? So I don't want to live in such an animal world, okay? And I will not follow a God. Doesn't matter if Ganesha, if it is Jesus, if it is Allah or whatever, that cannot guide me to a better world that I get rid of these problems. Okay. I better follow a prime minister or, a, um, you know, uh, um, a president or a political party that can help me to have a better life, okay? For example, in Sweden, we have a welfare system. That's why the crime is much less here because in this system, they take more from the rich and give it to the poor, okay? So they have brought this gap more, but it is not perfect, of course. Allah subhanahu wa wants no gaps, equality, absolute equality. He says, and this is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa This is a promise that will happen definitely. Uh, I, I will read for you that uh, the verse. Okay. 28, 5, chapter 28, verse 5. And we wanted to confer favor upon those who were oppressed on earth and make them leaders and make them inheritors, okay? So this is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that one day, because there are two uh, um, classes in Islam, in oppressed and oppressor, mustasafin mm -hmm. and mustakbirin, we call it, okay? Oppressed and oppressor. So he promised that the oppressed will rule and inherit the planet. It doesn't mean that they become oppressor and a new class will start again, oppress and oppressor. No, it means that this oppression has to disappear, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us many, there are many uh, verses as well that it is why we follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get rid of all these problems, to live in a world that there is no oppressor and no oppressed. And this... Uh, uh, Mahdi as well, coming of Mahdi as well. You know, for example, these uh, Ahmadiyyas, they believe that Mr. Mirza was Mahdi, okay? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> this is absolutely wrong because, right, right. first of all, Mahdi will come to establish the equality, okay? He comes to get rid of the uh, injustice. Uh, Prophet Peace Bwani says that when he comes, he feels the the planet with justice as much as they were in justice okay so it means that absolute justice okay otherwise why he comes he comes for what okay yeah, yeah. so he comes to change something that we cannot change all right and later i will tell you why i don't believe that Mahdi will come <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> i will tell you that uh, um, so he comes to change uh, everything everything from uh, injustice to justice Absolute justice. So, Mr. Mirza didn't do anything. Nothing has changed. Okay, he just has made a I don't know a kingdom for me, for for himself and so on. No uh, justice uh, has happened anywhere. Pakistan, for example, he, it was his home country, I think. Yeah. So uh, that's why these people who say that uh, we are Mahdi, they are just liars. Okay. Now I will tell you why no Mahdi, not Jesus, none of them would come because. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to send somebody to save us, he would send it, that person or that a thousand years ago. He would send him Second World War. Because if you look at the history of mankind, you see that it is going towards better world, better time, okay? For example, if somebody fall from the sky today in Stockholm and say, hey, I'm Mahdi, or I'm Jesus, I'm here to save you. People say, oh, sorry, we have problems, but we had much more problems in the past. You came very late, okay? Or in Syria, people are dying now, bound by Assad. Let's say in 20 years, inshallah, they get freedom, they get uh, well off, better, better land, better world, you know, and no bombs, everything is fine, then Mahdi will fall there and say that, hey, I have come to save you. People say, oh, sorry, you should come 2011. You should come 2015, not now. Now we are better. So why he created us, if he wanted to save us, he would not create us, he wouldn't put us here. He would keep us in 
uh, what is it, in heaven. But he put us here and he sent us, he gave us this ability to understand so that we change it by his, uh, uh, what is it, by his words, by his guidance. This is us who have to go out of this jungle through that way he has shown us 1400 years. We have to go out, not that somebody carry us out. Let's say that Mahdi comes, okay, today. He has several uh, options to, um, to create that justice on this planet. One is that change our mind, get rid of our free will, okay? so that we are all like robots and work. We don't do any bad deeds. Farmers of Afghanistan, they just produce potatoes and tomatoes, nothing else. Those people in Latin America, they just produce, uh, I don't know, other things, okay? But yeah. not cooking, all right? But anyway, he has to put food on our table. He has to somehow charge us. <laughs> you know, you understand what I mean. So yeah. this is one option, which is out of question because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not play with our you know, free will, okay? This free will has been there and has to stay there. So we have to do things freely, okay? So the second option is that he force us, okay? Which doesn't work. In many countries, there are such a force, you know, you know that if you kill somebody, you might get executed, okay? So, but people uh, uh, anyway do that because of there are certain things. So even that one doesn't work by force, maybe help a little bit, but it will continue. Or the third option is the same way I told you that, to get rid of this system that guide us people, encourage people, okay? Brother, if everything is free on this planet, everything, do you think anybody go and steal a TV or a computer or a phone or a car? No, because it is there, you can go and take it. All right, how it works, how it works is another thing, okay? But is it the source? Yes, it is the source. For example, bank robbing is a problem, but how to get rid of this problem is to get rid of the banks. We don't need banks. If bank doesn't exist, then nobody go and rob a bank. If gold doesn't have any value, it, it is free, nobody go and steal gold. Imagine that the, the price of gold is like a normal metal. Yeah. Nobody go and steal it, okay? Nobody kill for, for, you know, gathering so much gold. So the source is exactly this. And that uh, shaitan was a story that pro Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was trying to tell us that there is a source that, you know, guide you to this, uh, all these bad deeds. And that source is the one who spread poverty among you, okay? So, and I gave you the good example, like my country, that a more satanic system came to power. Not that the Satan became more power. After 40 years, the same people, okay, with the same language, with the same religion, okay, but crimes and everything increased thousands of times, okay, or a thousand times, okay. But, uh, and then the, uh, the example of farmers of Afghanistan, so if you have any question, uh, I would be very glad to answer your question. Yes. It sounds, it sounds, sounds like we're getting a little bit of feedback. So let, me, let me remove you, then I'm going to pull you back in. Okay, so let me... Okay. okay. Let, me let me remove me myself. myself. Okay. 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 Okay, brother. Okay. So if, let me put you on mute for just for a second. So, brother, if you have... Uh, if you're listening through YouTube or any other uh, source other than the platform... Put it on mute. Make sure you put it on mute, inshallah. Okay. Let me, okay, let me see here. Let's see. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't I, hear it. I don't hear it now. Okay, great. Yeah, I okay. hear you. I, I listen to you. I, the YouTube is uh, off, actually. Okay, great. No, it's it's fixed now, so, so I don't hear the, the uh, feedback now or the uh, hear my voice repeating. So, alhamdulillah. So, yeah, a, a beautiful discussion, brother, and it does boil down to, like I've been telling people, uh, and as I prepare for my debate with, with Samuel Green uh, addressing slavery, uh, in a previous discussion I had, we were addressing the fact that, you know, Satan is obviously the shaitan. Iblis is a, a sworn enemy to mankind. And the straight path that you mentioned, you know, Allah says that uh, once he threw the Iblis out of paradise, uh, Iblis responded to him, says, because you've cast me away 
from paradise. I'll lie in wait for man on your straight path, and I'll attack from before them, behind them, from the right and the left, and you won't find most of them thankful. You'll not find most of them to be obedient to you. And so, therefore, he's come to he, – because because Iblis, the shaitan, cannot create, he tries to take creation and to destroy creation. And, and so taking our focus off of our creator and actually placing it on creation is a means to do so. And he does through does so through economics and other means as well. But you're you're right. Economics is the primary uh, way in which he does it. Um, e economics and 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 money and so forth is a means uh, uh, for um, is one of the driving forces for a man to try to achieve money because he's trying to get the women and the women want the money and they try to get the man with the money and it's just an ongoing circle, uh, an ongoing problem that we have. Right. And in the same in the same way, we become slaves to the th to the creation itself. Instead of being submitters to our Creator, and being slaves, which is a good thing, is obedient, being obedient slave or servant or being one who's who's uh, submitting to the will of our Creator. Uh, instead, we bec we become focused on the creation itself and become a slave to the creation. And the primary thing that we become a slave to is the money. And so that's a, that that's a big problem. Um, and so I, I'm curious, you, you said in Sweden that uh, the majority of the people there are atheists. Did, did you say that? Uh, a lot of them. Yeah. I don't know the statistic, but a yeah. lot of them are, yes. Uh, yeah. The thing is that I said uh, this money is not, of course, uh, about women, but that's, of course, a, a part of that. But yeah. this money is uh, uh, agreed uh, that uh, people... Uh, uh, some people tell me that what we can do with greed I say that greed is for money. If money yeah. does, they cannot be greed. Greed for what? Greed for eating? No. Yeah. For a sport? Doesn't matter, okay? Greed is just for money. So get rid of this uh, system, okay? And then um, I want to tell you uh, another thing, that the story about uh, Shaitan. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to Shaitan, okay? And Shaitan said, give me time until Qiyamah, yeah. all right? This is something that, unfortunately, majority of fellow Muslims, scholars, none of them analyze it, okay? But today we are in 21st century, we can analyze it, okay? He says that, give me time until Qiyamah. Allah SWT says that, no, I give you time, but not until Qiyamah, until a certain decided thing, waqt al ma'loom, okay? I had a discussion with a brother as well, <clears throat> uh, that uh, he, he said, you know, the time they were talking, if you just analyze it, imagine that it was zero, beginning, yeah, zero. And Qiyama is 100, all right? He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me time until 100 so that I fool them. I show you that they are not, you know, that creature, that me, an angel, uh, you know, prostrate to them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, I will not give you time until 100. He didn't say all of this. He said that, uh, uh, I give you time, but until waqt al ma'lum. So it means that not until 100, because he yeah. request was 100. He said, no, until waqt al ma'lum means that somewhere between 0 to 100, okay? So just imagine that 90 is the time. He knows, yeah. yes, we don't know it, but we just imagine that the time is 90. And today is 89.9, tomorrow is 90. We wake up, Shaitan doesn't exist. If Shaitan is that angel, okay, not the capitalism which I was explaining. So we wake up tomorrow and Shaitan doesn't exist. You think that farmers of Afghanistan will stop to produce opium? No, they will continue because they have to eat. It's not that they wake up and say, oh my God, why I'm doing this? They have to eat, brother. This is reality. The reality is they have to eat. The greed will not disappear from people. That 1% will continue to become richer and richer. They don't wake up tomorrow and say, oh, why? I don't need billions of dollars. Okay? I need just a normal life. No, they will not do that. So what if then uh, shaitan doesn't exist and capitalism exists? We see that everything continues the same way. But imagine that shaitan is the same, uh, what is it, the same angel, okay? And tomorrow we get rid of the capitalism. It's not that 90, okay? Just tomorrow we get rid of the capitalism. Everything is free and uh, we share everything with each other. Shaitan will come and talk to you, go and rob a bank. You say, excuse me, are you crazy? There is no bank to, to rob, okay? Mm -hmm. Or go and steal food. I say, are you crazy, shaitan? 
uh, food is free. I can go and take it, okay? Yeah. So then, brother, the shaitan is absolutely powerless. The shaitan is exactly this system. Let's get rid of this system. Another thing is I say that Allah SWT is fair, is just. So if he has created that shaitan that is everywhere on this planet and fool everybody, affect everybody, imagine that U.S. government create a virus, spread it among people, okay? And even you go to the desert to, uh, uh, what is it? This Nevada desert, you can catch it, okay? And if you catch it, the government will put you in jail, punish you. Is that fair? No, this is not fair. Excuse me, why you produce this, um, you know, this virus, spread, spread it among people, and you know that people catch it anyway. So, and then you want to punish people. So this is not, this is, this was just a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's story that we today, 21st century understand, but he gave us, he gave us the, the codes that we have, we have to open those codes. We have to find out, uh, what is it? Who is the true shaitan? And I explained that shaitan cannot be more stronger now in my home country, cannot be stronger in Afghanistan, than Sweden. No, it is the system which is shaitan. It is the system which is spread poverty among us. We get rid of this system and then live equally and uh, share everything with each other. We get rid of this. You know, for example, <clears throat> I heard uh, somebody, a rich uh, person, I think in Saudi Arabia, his car collection is $1 billion. Yes. Just car collection. Have you, can you even imagine that you know, we are living in such a world where hundreds of millions of people are starving. You know, they, 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 have, they don't have proper food. And then somebody's car collection is $1 billion. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's and th there, is, there is a rich Indian guy in India. I don't know if you have heard. His house is $1 billion. Helicopter land on his house, okay? His uh, uh, electricity uh, bill was nearly 100,000 pounds every month uh, or every day, I don't remember, but that was a lot. In a country that people are starving in India. So we don't want to live in this jungle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create, I say, uh, you know, Professor Richard Dawkins, do you know him? He's the yes. most important, uh, famous atheist on the planet. He was, uh, he made a documentary movie. He was trying to find out the, the reason of uh, creation. <clears throat> he couldn't find anything. He said that we have to find our own uh, reason, uh, like uh, going to the space and so on. No, the reason we are here is that he created us like animals, okay? But he gave us this ability to understand. So he sent us prophets to guide us to live like human beings, okay? and. You live and die like an animal, you will be punished. You live and die like a human being, you will go to heaven, to Jannah, okay? So this is why we are living on this planet. And I don't want to live in this jungle. I want to live in a human world. And I'm fighting for that. I say, Ehtina Surat al Mustaqim, and he has shown me, Alhamdulillah, my movie, uh, which I talked to you about, The Last Message of God, is also about my journey. Uh, to Islam, and uh, it is uh, about the same subject, and that uh, about those dress of Ahram, <clears throat> that we are absolutely equal there, and we are worshipping, we are prostrating to that dress of Ahram, the equality. That's me, the right way. Let me post that link uh, for that movie in the in the chat, so if anyone would like to see that, it's the movie about the brother's uh, story and his journey to Islam and so forth. Uh, that I just posted in the chat. Let me let me ask you a question, brother. In regards to uh, the day of Kiyama, the day of judgment for non-Muslims who may be watching, it means the day of judgment yes. uh, that Allah did not promise uh, uh, Iblis, Satan, that he would have until the day of judgment. Now, based on Hadith, uh, the Hadith explained that uh, as a sign before the day of judgment that Isa, alayhi salat was salam, he, Jesus, peace be upon him, the son of Mary, Isa, that he will return before the day of judgment as a sign before the day of judgment, and that he will actually uh, destroy the, the uh, he will kill Iblis, the Satan, uh, the Antichrist, rather, and he will um, uh, he'll break the cross and kill the swine and so forth. And then and then after that, uh, Isa alayhi salam, he's going to live for a period of forty years. He's going to die a natural death, and that um, 
eventually before the day of judgment that every human, every human being, all of creation will turn to dust before the day of judgment. So this could be, uh, what, what, what is your opinion about this in that, uh, for one, one question is, do you believe that Isa, alayhi salat wa salam, that he's going to return? And do you see this window in which uh, the hadith explain that all of, all of humanity and all of creation is going to turn to dust, that only Allah is going to exist for a period of time, that this could be that window that we're talking about, that, that, uh, uh, that Allah gave Iblis up until this point, until all of creation was destroyed and turned to dust. And in the period, that window, it, obviously he's... He's not, he can't operate during that window because the earth doesn't exist uh, in, in the form in which it was. It's Everything's dust. All, all of humanity is gone. All of creation is gone. And only Allah exists at that point. Um, so to, to I know you said that you believe in the Hadith and so forth, the, the authentic Hadith. But so the question being, do you believe that uh, either the Mahdi or, or uh, Isa being the Messiah uh, that um, Muslims, Christians, and Jews believe in, um, in d various ways, but do you believe that um, they're going to come and correct any of these issues? Because obviously, um, w mankind has been dealing with the same tests and same trials from the very beginning. So th there's really nothing new. Allah says, "Do you think that we're going to test you with something that we didn't test the previous people with?" And there, those previous previous people that are being tested are assigned to the people that, that live now and so forth and in the future. So. Do you believe that they're going to come and 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 correct any of this? Uh, maybe clarify that. You know. So do you? I know you said you don't believe that Jesus, uh, the Son of Mary, Isa alayhi salam, salam, that he's going to re return at all. Do you? So is is you don't believe he's going to return at all, or do you believe that? Um, maybe you want to clarify this. Just yes, to, yes. Okay. Okay. I, actually, there is a, a site uh, uh, atheist. Republic, they <laughs> they had a post I saw today that uh, 2,000 years has passed and uh, Jesus hasn't come. Uh, don't waste your time. He will not come back. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, in reality, uh, this one says something. Okay. That I told you as well that if you look at the, uh, I mean, everything for me uh, as a former um, atheist, everything for me should make sense. Okay. If it doesn't make sense. Allah SWT says also that if something you don't understand, don't follow it, if you don't understand it, okay? So if uh, he was going to uh, come, I said that if you look at the history of mankind, we are going towards better time, okay? We are not going towards worse time than, for example, Second World War or First World War, okay? Yeah. I see that, that, for example, this Arab stream also, uh, uh, spring, yes, also, a sign that they are changing, the revolution will happen, dictatorship will disappear, okay? Things going to better time, not worse time. So if he was going to stand some, because we know that Mahdi will come to spread justice, okay? So when everything, uh, justice has prevailed, why we have to, why he has to come? For example, there were much more injustice in Sweden in the past than today. Today is much more just here than in the past. So why he has to come now and save us? So hadith, uh, I have to say that must match Quran. If it contradicts Quran, Quran says that uh, many verses of Quran says that Prophet Muhammad, you don't know the future, okay? It's just Allah knows, especially about people ask you about uh, the Amr, okay? Say the, the knowledge of that is only with Allah. Okay, so this that he comes and then 40 years later, this happened, that happened. It says that, okay, then is uh, it, it goes against Quran, Quranic verse. So there are lots of, uh, unfortunately, lots of hadiths that are fabricated. That if it goes, yeah. it goes against Quran, okay, then we have to say that this, this is uh, not authentic, okay? And yeah. I told you that, and I told you that, brother, if he was going to send, these are messages, I know that these are somehow from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these stories, okay, about coming of Jesus and uh, Messiah and uh, uh, Mahdi. Uh, these are messages that, hey, you are not, unlike some people say that we will always have problems, we will always, we can never get rid of our problems. He said, no, no, no. There is a way out, but 
Who is going to take you that uh, out of that? Is us? Is brother Kenny? Is Muji? Is V R Mahdi? All of us. We have gotten the message. We just have to spread it. We are now his messengers. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's messengers. Okay. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that prophets, those who kill prophets, and those who spread the message of equality. Yes. Okay, the killer of them is equal equal to to the killer of a prophet. Okay, so he put even those who spread the message of equality. Okay, even um, there, there was a scholar. He was saying that those who know Quran, those who know Islam, Islam is talking about non-Muslims. Even non-Muslims who spread and fight for this equality, the killer of them will be equal to the killer of a prophet. Okay, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is so kind, so mercy that He understands that this person didn't understand something. He had lack of knowledge. That's why he didn't accept Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He didn't accept Islam. But he's fighting for the same cause. Okay, yeah. he's also dying like a human being. He left his life. He, you know, he fought, fought for others, okay, than himself. He uh, gave his life. So this is the beauty of Islam. This is the uh, greatness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that he's not uh, greedy. He's not, you know, like uh, those who say those dicta this dictatorship is in us. Yeah. In Marxist, in every, even even vegetarians, okay, they you are against them. They want to kill you, okay. You. You, you have the minimum di different to their opinion. They want to kill you, okay? But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not like that. All right. So the, the only, th uh, as I said, everything makes sense. That the only thing uh, that He created us is that we go out of this jungle. We get rid of this jungle and jungle rules and live like human beings, okay? And we got the message. We know the right way. I'm explaining it that the right way is those dress of Ahram. That's why we are not praying towards the sky. You know, normally when you ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you just ask like this, or you look at the sky, okay? Or yeah. Ya Allah, help me or something, okay? Only <laughs> Salat, Ihtina Surat al Mustaqim. When you want to ask Surat al Mustaqim, only that time you have to stand towards Mecca. And what's happening in Mecca is happening that which I explained, the equality. So that's yeah. the right way. And I explained the wrong way. I explained everything here. Yes, brother. Yeah. So, so you know, the, the unfortunate thing is that most people in the world are non-believers. Um, um, the Christians and the Jews and the Muslims and so forth are, are, are really in the big picture of, of the number of people that are in the world are on the, on the losing end as far as... Uh, the number of people in the world. Most people are, are non-believers. And so you'd mentioned that um, that the people that have the the economic power, the people that you know they have 99%, they even want more. Yes. And so that 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 desire to get more is always there. It's always going to exist. Yes. And so because they're not on the straight path of Insalat al Mustaqim, they they have no God conscience, they're always going to keep they're always going to want more. So therefore um, it doesn't seem to me that the the uh, the problem is ever going to to fade away. Yeah, brother. Can I explain? In, in regards to, in, in regards to Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, the Quran doesn't specify, but just like the other hadith, the, the you know the where the the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him expounds upon things that are are mentioned in the Quran. In the Quran, uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam he says that um, blessed was was I on the day that I was born. The day that I died, and the day that I'll be resurrected again, of course. So, as Muslims, yeah. So as Muslims, we believe that. We, yeah, we. Yeah, so we we believe that he was born. We believe that he was born. That he was not killed or crucified. That he ascended, so he never did die. But then, but he says, on the day that he says, the day that I was born, the day that I died, and the day that I will raise again. So we don't believe that initially when Isa alayhi salat was salam came. That he actually died, he ascended to heaven, but that he will return before the day of judgment as a sign before the day of judgment, and then he will die a natural death, and then, um, you know, uh, at, at that point, at some point along the way, everything's going to turn to dust, and only Allah is going to exist, and then Isa alayhi salat was from Jesus, the son of Mary, is going to be resurrected with every other human being. 
before the day of judgment. So blessed was he the day that he was born, the day that he died a natural death after he returned, and then on the day that he was resurrected again, he was blessed. Um, so I'm, I'm bringing that up because uh, just the, to me, I don't see the, the conditions actually getting better before the day of judgment. I think they're getting worse. And I think based on what you stated, I agree with what you stated. The people who have power, they want more power. They're not satisfied with, uh, with 99%. They want, they want 110%. They don't want just hundred percent either. They want 110%. And therefore the, the, the imbalance is always going to exist. The poverty level in, in throughout the world is, is immense. We have people that are, are struggling, uh, and they don't they don't have drinking water on a daily basis uh, that they're they're struggling with. And we're matter of fact, speaking of that, we're running a a water well campaign through Consider This TV, where we're trying to build water wells for this very purpose. So the people who are on true guidance can see and recognize these problems and know that we have a responsibility as Muslims as part of our obligation to to consider those people and try to take from our sources or our income that Allah has provided with us. Matter of fact, there's a verse of the Quran. I believe in, in Surah Baqarah, uh, Ayah ay 90 or 290, I think it's 90, but uh, where Allah is telling people to to free free the, the captives by taking from your source of income the things that Allah has blessed you with and give it to the, the captives. And this is a concept of Islam for sadaqah and zakat and so forth and giving to charity and that the people who are on the, true, the straight path and have a knowledge of these things do have a responsibility and obligation, a great opportunity to, to try to help other people that are less fortunate in the world. And, and in that way, it, it, it starts to correct the balance, the imbalance in some ways. But, but overall, because we have so many uh, non-believers in the world, it seems to me in my mind that the, 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 the problem is never going to resolve itself. I, don't, I, I personally, I don't think it's getting better. I think it's actually getting worse in my opinion. I think it's a, uh, um, as you mentioned a second ago earlier, that uh, uh, there's a lot of people who live on less than one dollar a day, and then you have people who have a, a billion dollar home and billion billion dollars worth of vehicles in their in their in their garage, and so there's a great disparity there, a great imbalance that I, I personally I don't think will ever uh, see being corrected before mankind is uh, faces the day of judgment. So. Um, so, so what do you what do you think about that? I mean, yes. do you and think I'm it's right. actually getting better, or do you think it's? Uh, I think the evidence actually goes the other way that it's not getting better. Um, and Can I have, stop? Sure, sure, brother. Yes, brother. I read for you that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that okay that uh, it is a promise. Uh, I told you Quran twenty eight five okay mm -hmm. that uh, we and we wanted to confer favor upon those who were oppressed, okay, on earth, and make them leaders. So those who are oppressed, he's promised that those who are oppressed will become leaders and inherit the planet. And there are others, okay, that Allah says that uh, in uh, uh, chapter 8, 7 and 8, chapter 8, verse 7 and 8, but Allah intended to establish the truth by his words and to eliminate the oppressors that he should establish the truth and abolish a falsehood, even if the criminals dislike it, okay? So these are, there are many others, okay? These are all promises from Allah SWT that it will, okay? One day that Mahdi, uh, upcoming of Mahdi, I told you that this Messiah which comes, okay? These are stories that there is a way out, okay? We are not going to live always on this uh, with these problems. You mentioned that 1% that they will always continue. I told you, brother, get rid of their opportunity, okay? Get rid of the opportunity. They will not be able to gain a single dollar when a single dollar doesn't exist, okay? Yeah. How they are going to gather money when it doesn't exist, okay? When gold uh, costs zero dollar, they will not gather it, okay? So get, it is like, uh, you know, there are several children, small children are playing on a uh, floor with several knives there on the floor. And you just put the rules that don't touch the, the knife. You touch the knife, I will punish you, okay? Or you get caught. 
uh, you injure yourself. The best way is to get rid of those knives, okay? Remove the knives, then that will not happen. Okay, you cannot say to farmers of Afghanistan that opium is haram, it's forbidden, don't do it. They need to put food on their table. Rules alone cannot help anything, cannot change anything. And uh, it's going to, to better, uh, you know, time because I know that people getting, uh, what is it? They are getting uh, atheists and so on because they haven't gotten the correct message, okay? We have shown them a wrong message, okay? There are millions of Iranian now who are atheists or Islamophobic. Why? Mm -hmm. Because a regime under the name of Islam, a bunch of mafia, terrorists, murderers, they came and destroyed the image of Islam and people who didn't have the knowledge, they thought that, oh, look, this is Islam. No, I don't want it, okay? I'm against it, okay? So if we show them the right Islam, if we show them the, the true uh, message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will come. They are not, you know, psychopaths and they don't want to, you know, they don't accept it. So, so they will, the majority of people, they will accept it and inshallah, we change it. And Mahdi, Jesus, if they want to come, I explain how, what they want to do. They want to come to do what? This is what we can do ourselves, okay? We don't need them. He has given us the message. If he was going to send a Superman to save us, he would send it during Second World War. When Genghis Khan was destroying uh, so many people, you, you know what Genghis Khan was doing. Yeah, Genghis he Khan. Was, yes, yes. So he should send somebody that time to save people. <laughs> Not now, today, I tell you that. I see yeah. things get getting better even in um, this Arab Spring show that people are going to wake up. They are getting, you know, they want their rights, okay? And yeah. then... Well, I think, I, think, I think your idea of um, would be beautiful if, you know, it, it's obviously, I, you and I certainly agree that Islam is the answer and the solution for all of these problems. Uh, yes. But it requires, it requires mankind to accept and embrace that, that truth and embrace... The guidance of Allah, and and I think that the the evidence is is clear that most people, unfortunately, you know, we're being tested, and most people are gonna are failing these tests over and over again. That most people are not going to accept the truth. We're 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 dealing with so much Islamophobia in the world, knowing yeah. that Islam has the solution. If you if you stop and for for matter of fact, for non-Muslims and Muslims out there who may be questioning things. If you stop and step back and free your mind of, of the Islamophobia and all the, the negative talk about Islam and actually engage in actually studying Islam itself, you will see that the that Islam does have a the unquestionable solution for all of these issues that we're facing. But it requires someone to do that first and foremost and then to accept it and then to live by it. So it's one thing to recognize the truth. But it's another thing to live by that truth. And that's why Allah says in the Quran that truth is made clear from falsehood. And whoever, he says, let there be no compulsion in religion. Truth is made clear from falsehood. And whoever embraces the truth is grab hold of a trustworthy handhold that will never break. But we see that most people, because they're chasing money, they want to live like, uh, you know, uh, all the superstars and the, the people who who have all the recognition and so forth, and they they want the glamour and the gleam. And Allah says in the Quran that the world is is nothing but play and amusement. And they're chasing the play and the amusement. And because they're chasing the play and the amusement, they've made that thing that they're chasing their god in a sense. So they reject the idea of a creator, forget about the creator, and start chasing the creation. And they're trying to elevate their their status in their own minds by making themselves feel good because they have a bunch of money in the bank. But then people down the road are are struggling and living in poverty, while they're while they're living in abundance and they're being tested by that. So it's it seems that I, I totally agree. If if people would live by what Islam teaches, then we could do it on our own. But because mankind is weak and mankind is misguided in most instances, um, I think it's it's a it's a great uphill battle. I, I, I you know may Allah have mercy on all of us. Uh, and help us to achieve that and help us to be better representatives and better ambassadors of this truth of Islam uh, to people so that we can, we can, you know, take steps up that, that, that mountain that we're climbing. Uh, but I think in the big picture, I think that um, um, 
you know, the, this whole idea, like you'd mentioned that the shaitan is, is the economics. It's, it's the money that people are chasing. So if, if Isa alayhi salat wa salam came and it says that he's going to destroy the, uh, he's going to kill Iblis. So this idea of, if based on your, your interpretation or your reasoning on behind this, and I appreciate it. So I'm not, I'm not trying to debate you on the matter. I'm, no. I'm very, very intrigued by what you're saying. And I'm just trying to put it all together in, in a way that, uh, maybe we can both learn and, and see it from different angles. But if, if Iblis is technically the money that people are chasing and, and Isa alayhi salat wa salam, Jesus, the son of Mary is going to return before the day of judgment. He's going to, he's going to kill the antichrist, kill Iblis, break the cross, break, break the idea that someone should worship any part of creation, kill the swine, meaning the things that we take in that we, we shouldn't be taking in. We know that we're not supposed to consume the flesh of swine, but that also encompasses many other things that we are not supposed to be engaging in. So kill the idea of all the, all of this wrongdoing, including, including this economic oppression and then create peace, peace on the earth for this period of time where people are still tested in the, in the, in the, during the peace that's supposed to come during that period of time after Isa alayhi salat wa salam is, is, is supposed to return, there'll be peace for a period of time. But in that period of time, people are still going to be trying to worship Isa as though he's Allah. And this is why, based on the hadith, that uh, that the uh, uh, Sajuj and Majuj, Gog and Magog, will come and Isa will not be able to destroy them. These beasts that are going to come, he won't be able to destroy them. And as a sign that only Allah is Allah, only there's only one God, that Allah is going to send some insects or some, some creatures that have come and burrow into the to Gog and Magog and destroy Gog and Magog. And the people who were uh, during that time worship, still worship, trying to worship Isa as though he's God or, you know, uh, God in the flesh, um, they're going to realize, wait a minute, if this is Jesus, if this is the son of Mary, he's the Messiah. And he can't destroy the Gog and Magog. What kind of God is that? And it's going to be a sign that there's only one Allah. There's only one God. That Jesus couldn't do it. He's, that's not what he came to do. He came to do a particular task. And that, um, you know, because he cannot de defeat Gog and Magog. Uh, 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 Google, how do you say it in Arabic? Majuj, Sajuj and Majuj, right? Yeah. I, Gog I, and Magog. I, yes. I haven't said it in so long that I can't remember. Majuj, Majuj and Majuj. Ajuj and Majuj, yeah, alhamdulillah. So uh, he's not going to be able to destroy them, but um, uh, Allah will. Allah is going to destroy them. So it could be, brother, that um, that this this thing that you're talking about, maybe it, it maybe that's the period of time that we're that that where things are going to get better, as you mentioned. It could be, you know, only Allah knows when it boils boils down to it. But uh, but yes. to me, I, I see it. I see it from that perspective in that. I personally don't think that um, that this imbalance that exists in uh, um, with uh, less than less than one percent of the population, when it boils down to it, one one percent of the population holding the majority of the, of the wealth in the world, and the other the other people are they get the leftovers. I don't see it ever changing until the day of judgment, because those people who disbelieve are the ones who live in this life and they have everything that they want. So therefore, they don't need God. They don't need a creator because they got they got all the money they, they have. Anything they want in this life, they have it. And they're being tested by that. And so because Allah is merciful, he gives even those who reject his, his existence, he gives them everything they want in this life. So if this is what you want, take this, take this. And on the day of judgment, you're going to be bankrupt on the day of judgment. And I think the, the interpretation based on the verses that you mentioned, whereas the oppressed will then become uh, above the oppressor, is that on the day of judgment, the people who lived in this life and they and they endured these difficulties and these hardships, now they're going to be elevated in status above those who lived in this life and they had everything that they wanted, made made the creation their their god. And no, so brother, I think, yeah. Can I explain? It sure. says that uh, they will be inherited uh, leaders and inherit the the earth, the planet. Okay, yeah. so it is here on this life. And then about the, the, you said that the people don't accept it, okay? But the thing is that, do you know this uh, Trinity channel? Yes. Yes, they are very Islamophobic, okay? Absolutely, so absolutely. The right, the right, uh, you know, uh, message, people, anybody, 
they will accept it. You have had many debates with them. Look at this. Uh, I will sh uh, give you this. This is a much nicer version of uh, Islam. When I see you, I love your version of Islam. Although it doesn't exist, it's not reality. I I'd love to make it a reality, though. I, I personally love your view of Islam, and I wish Muslims would adapt to your view of Islam. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So, last question to you, Brother Modi. Okay. First of all, I'd like to say, whatever reformation you're doing in Islam, I'm all for it. <laughs> you keep doing what you're doing. I love you, brother. So this what I'm showing is, brother, to you, what I showed you is that if you that first one was a professor, an atheist professor of Stockholm University. He mm -hmm. also said, I love your version of Islam. Okay. So depend on what version of Islam you show them. Okay. I hate ISIS, I hate Taliban. Okay. If Islam is that, I'm the biggest enemy of such Islam. Okay. But what I'm talking about. Is er nobody can say no. I reject it. This system, uh, okay, that nobody die, nobody die of hunger. I don't want it. I want to live in the animal world, you know, in this jungle. I love it. Nobody can say that, okay. And then you want to say that. But Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was just an ordinary man. He says himself that I'm just an ordinary man. I'm mm -hmm. just like you. When he could change people of 1400 years ago that the highest knowledge was just reading and writing okay most of them didn't have that knowledge either okay when he could change those barbarians those backward people who were burying their daughters alive okay then you think it's difficult for us me and you in 21st century with such a knowledge to change people that say that Hey, this is the source of all problems. You said that we will never get rid of it because th those one percent they want more and more. Brother, I told you that. Don't let them to gain a single dollar. They will not do it. Get rid of this system. They cannot. Okay. Even yeah. If, even no, if no, I want. totally agree. I totally agree. But the the thing is, the it's the battle to achieve that. I don't think uh, because yes, they oh, because yes. they have the power and there's more there's more there's more people living in poverty in the world than there are people that are rich. But yes. but the people that are rich have so much, uh, so many resources because of the money that they have. Uh, the the uh, in in a in a in a world where this could be achieved, um, it, it's be yeah. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful idea, but but I think uh, I don't know if it's a, a realistic idea in, it, unless people truly embrace Islam. If if people would do that, then we could achieve that. But um, Based on okay, let me tell you, brother. Yeah. Now, okay, let me tell you one thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us prophets to solve our problems, and he solved many problems in the past. Okay, yeah, I just give some example. For example, in uh, uh, Arabia, they were burying their daughters alive, and then <clears throat> now they, they didn't do it after Islam. Okay, so that was a problem which he solved. Uh, alcohol uh, was a problem uh, among Muslims, it, it is solved, okay? So he's solved, let's say, 30%, 20%, we don't, we say some percent of our problems in the past. Did he aim to solve pr problems? Yes. Or he just uh, accidentally, he solved the problems. No, he aimed to solve the problem, okay? So he aimed to solve 10% of our problems. Or he aimed to solve 100% of our problems. I told you from the beginning, <clears throat> if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would try to solve 20% to solve of our problems, he cannot solve 100 of our, of our problems, then he's not almighty. <clears throat> because the government, the Swedish government has solved maybe 50% of our problems here. Okay? A lot of problems have, have been saved uh, and solved. In I, told <clears throat> I told you that... <clears throat> Here, the gap is less, so the crime is much less, okay? So the gap, if the gap become like this totally, then the, the problem will totally... Yeah, I, yeah. I know, I say that, yes, I know that it is difficult, but it is the, the aim. Uh, we are created to do that, you know? And he has given us the message and we will do it. It, it take time, maybe take hundreds of years, maybe take a thousand years, okay, and maybe more, but we are going towards that, that yeah. way, okay but this is the message no more uh what is it and prophet will come 
Absolutely no, not because the message is given, the last final message, this is the way out. If the Salat al Mustaqim is there, Mecca, equality, okay, worship it, prostrate to it, go there, reject the opposite of it, sacrifice for it, okay? Yeah. So, so, brother, you don't believe that Isa is going to return before the day of judgment? You don't believe he'll, he'll return? I mean, I, it's, I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not no, trying to debate you on the matter, but I just don't but, know what what he was to what he yeah. uh, he wants to do because we will do it ourselves. We will fix it. Okay, yeah. we don't need uh, him to come back. That's a, that's just a, uh, what is it? A hadith. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you, this, so brother, you, so you believe that that mankind collectively mankind is going to solve all these problems before the day of judgment man mankind to islam okay not mankind yeah. cannot do it by himself that's yeah. why we need allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance okay so we, you know like i give you an example brother i will give you an example for example a pre president comes and say no that president previous president's uh, uh, plans were not so good my plans is this 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 I'm going to solve your problems with these plans, okay? So that's why people go and vote for this new president or prime minister, okay? So Islam has that plan. He says that this is the plan. The source is this. The problem is this. The shaitan, which is spread poverty among you, that 1%, okay? That system, the jungle system is the problem. The way out of this jungle is equality. So it is we who have to accept it, spread it, and make it happen, okay? How yes. to uh, work, no, I how totally, to... I, yes, I totally agree. I totally yes. agree again that if people would follow Islam, then these issues wouldn't exist. It, it'd be eliminated. There's no question about it. Yes, but but, the, but again, the, the challenge is, the challenge is we're having a difficult enough time to, um, to get people to accept Islam in the world of Islamophobia. So it's, so we're fighting a, a battle that... I personally, I don't believe that 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 we as a as mankind can achieve that. Now, I believe as Muslims that we we're responsible individually and as the Ummah, the followers of Muhammad, peace be upon him, that we have a responsibility to do our part in in trying to to help any way that we can. We're going to be tested by that. That's that's what we're being tested by individually and as as Muslims collectively. Uh, we're going to be we're going to face that judgment on the day of judgment for how we did this, the knowledge that we have about how to achieve this and then, and then the efforts that we made in, in, in working towards it. So but the the again, the disparity in the the um, the ability to get people to accept even the idea of one creator, that's a huge step, you know, uh, fighting against the whole idea of um uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam being a, a a son of God or or being God in the flesh or being a partner with God, that's we're fighting an uphill battle there, and then we're fighting an uphill battle against uh, atheism, uh, people who don't believe in a God at all, and that's the majority of the people in the world they don't believe at all, or if they do, that's very superficial and they don't act on it, and so therefore we to to get people to embrace this this truth and this i in this uh, this guidance that Allah has provided in the Quran. Uh, that's the problem. It's uh, and that's why that's why it's it's re it's a requirement and obligation of opportunity for us as Muslims to do dawah and to talk to people about Islam so that we can get as many people on the straight path before the day of judgment as possible. But if if we if we achieve that, then it would um, it, it would mean that by the day by the time of the day of judgment that that most of the people living from the time of the prophet peace be upon him until the day of judgment uh you know uh, well i don't want to get into how many people are going to be in heaven and hell but but i i think it's a i agree i totally 100 percent agree that if people would follow what islam has has provided as far as the solution from our creator uh for all of these issues that we would be in a world that would be totally different It'd be totally different, but I don't see it happening. Matter of fact, the verse that I mentioned earlier I actually posted in the chat uh, because I I found the verse that I was talking about. It wasn't a, a, a Surah Baqarah, uh, Ayah ninety or two ninety. It was actually one seventy seven, where Allah says that it's not righteous righteousness for us our, for, for us to turn our faces to the east or to the west, but it's righteousness to spend of your substance for the ransom of slaves. And so. 
in regards to to slavery and and this talking about basically the economics that that we're living in um Slavery still exists today. Slavery exists in many different forms, and many people are enslaved, enslaved by economics itself. And so, it's uh, um, in order to 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 break down this this slavery that exists in the minds of man, people are enslaved by many different things. They're enslaved by poverty itself. So, therefore, Muslims have a requirement to to give in charity. But also, there's another way to look at it in that people are enslaved by the creation and chasing and chasing money and chasing uh, material things and so forth. And so again, Muslims spend of the substance that we have in that the knowledge that we have, we convey the truth of Islam and therefore free the people that are enslaved to the things that they're chasing of the creation. So there's, there's different, there's a, a, a few different ways to look at this. So Muslims have a responsibility to, to spend a, out of everything that we have, meaning our physical body our mental capacity, our words, our speech, our our our, our money, and so forth, in in, or, in order to free people of the thing that they're enslaved by, the the difficulties and the tests that they're being enslaved by. Islam has the solution for it, so it's our responsibility to spend of our essence of who we are in the cause of Allah to try to break down these things. And so again, it, it boils down to that uh, um, as the people in the video that you showed on the Trinity channel, um, I, I totally agree that if, if, if we followed, if, if mankind as a whole could follow and would choose to follow the guidance that Allah has provided, uh, in the Quran and through the example of the prophet Muhammad in the Sunnah and so forth in the Hadith, um, that we could get to that, to that, that point where things are, are balanced out and we're, we're living in, in, in a, in a, in a world that's, uh, uh, totally different than we're living in now, but uh, I think it's a personally, I think it's an uphill battle that I don't think we're ever going to be able to achieve, and that people are going to face the consequence of that failure on the day of judgment, or or be rewarded for achieving that goal within oneself and within one's own community and so forth. So uh, there's going to be the, the believers, and there's going to be the non-believers that are going to be are being tested by the same world that we live in, the same circumstances, but how we how we react to those circumstances differentiates those who are on guidance and on the straight path of Allah versus those who are outside of, maybe they're not on the path at all. They're not even on the path. They're completely outside of the path. Uh, uh, and unfortunately the vast majority of the world, people in the world are, are they're not even close to being on the path of Allah. So uh, brother, <clears throat> yes. Uh, you, you may not uh, believe that it will happen, but uh, I gave you examples from Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised. Okay, this um, uh, <clears throat> shaitan, the story of shaitan also says that one day it will disappear from our life <clears throat> and we will be without shaitan, which is the source of all our problems. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I told you that we stand towards Mecca, we say, show me the right way, is not uh, <clears throat> a useless uh, thing that yeah. we do. It, it is. It will guide us to that For right sure. way, yeah. because, because Allah, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not fail. Okay, His aim was to create us like animals living in this jungle, but He gave us the ability to understand, and He changed us to human being living in a human world. Okay, guide us to the right way, and it will happen definitely. Uh, and um, it is first. You say that people will not believe, but we have to. We don't need to tell them, come and believe in Allah. First, we have to go step by step. Do you believe that we have to get out of this jungle? Do you believe that we don't have to live like animals in this jungle? Do you believe that this is the source? We have to explain for them the source, the problem we are facing. If you believe that we have to get rid of these problems, okay, then that's okay. Let's go fight for that equality, all right? But I say that... I can explain, I can prove everybody as well that uh, without Islam, we cannot achieve it and we cannot keep it. Even if we come to that world, we cannot keep it because Islam is equipped, equipped with different equipment, like uh, the different equipment like praying, fasting, okay, other things that uh, these equipments help us to keep that equality, okay? Yes. Sacrifice, all these things. 
And uh, this reminder also, every day we have to sit, stand towards Mecca and say, show me the right way. These are also reminders. So that's why we need Islam. Okay, but if you don't want it, but you accept only this, for example, I give you the example of, again from my home country. We have a dictatorship, okay, and we want to bring this dictatorship down and we want to have a freedom, okay, a, a democracy in, in my country. So we have different groups, Marxists, Muslim, and, uh, and Christian, Jews, and others. So we have created a, a council called National Resistance Council. Okay, everybody have gathered in that uh, what is council to fight for one aim: bring down the dictator and a freedom. Okay, the Muslim one has another belief. The Marxist one has another belief. The Christian one has another belief. So far, we are going to fight for uh, uh, what is it? A free country, uh, a democracy in my country. So, so far we can all sit together and fight, okay? After we come to the democracy, then we talk about how to build the country and so on. So we can agree on minimums. We can agree on minimums. We don't need to agree at once on everything, okay? Yeah, the yeah. minimum is that this 1% is, okay, let's make it like Sweden at least first, okay? Let's see the entire planet become like Sweden. Uh, we make welfare, okay? We bring the gap closer, that 1%, they don't have right to become so rich, okay? We have to get maximum from them, okay? And give it to the poor. It is not fair, it is not justice that hundreds of millions of people live on $1 a day. They are, they are so hungry. So we have to uh, persuade them. And I showed you that it is possible to persuade them the only thing is that we have to fight for it, okay? We have to uh, support each other. We have to accept that this is the right way. This, uh, we don't just stand towards Mecca. We don't just go like uh, that, uh, uh, what is it? <clears throat> that brother, Quranist, who was saying that we just go there for debate, okay? No, we go there for a reason, okay? Yeah, yeah, I agree we with that. So, uh, so it, it, brother, you want to take some questions from the chat? And um, uh, so, listen, if you're viewing in the chat, if you'd like to ask any questions, feel free to post them in the chat. I do see a couple of questions that we'll we'll get to here in a second, um, brother. What which verses of the Quran that were you referring to uh, regarding um, uh, which which verses of the Quran were you referring to? I'd like to, I want to look in, into the tafsir and yes. just kind of see what. Uh, the verse, uh, first uh, was 28, uh, chapter 28, verse 5. Okay, 5. Okay, yes. and is there another one that you'd mentioned? I can't remember. Yes, the other one was uh, chapter 8, verse 7 and 8. Okay, I'll take a look at and those. Last one. Another one to establish the, the truth, okay? Yeah. And okay. abolish falsehood, okay? Yeah. So he's of, not course, to, of course, brother, you know that... Um, sorry, but I just have to tell you, he's not going to uh, abolish it, uh, establish the truth in the day of uh, judgment. He has to do it now, when we are here. We need it now, not that time, okay? Yeah. So if he's a, a wise God, then he has to establish it when we are here, so that we get rid of our problems, not that he establish it uh, one day before judgment day. Okay. What, what, brother? Do you do you agree that uh, so Allah, you know, He gives us freedom of choice. So He's provided, He's provided yes. the guidance through the messengers and and the final message through the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon uh, him and all the messengers and the prophets. Um, so Allah has is technically Allah has given He has given us the guidance, but yes. again, again, it boils down to so Allah has already done His part, and because there's no compulsion in religion. So Allah has left mankind to follow the examples of the prophets and messengers, primarily the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I say that because, you know, of course, in, as Muslims, we're not supposed to differentiate between the prophets and messengers, but because the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his life is so well documented in the Sunnah and the Hadith and so forth. We use that as a, as a criterion and an example uh, to follow uh, for in this guidance. So with that being said, Allah is, is technically, he's already provided the evidence and the, uh, not the evidence, but the guidance. But now we're being tested by whether or not mankind chooses to embrace that guidance or not. So Allah, Allah's already done, done the job there. That's his uh, job. Yeah. So that, right. So. Um, I will tell you one thing, brother. I will tell you one thing. Uh, my mother, uh, because I'm 33 years 
uh, abroad, uh, cannot visit my country. My mother always said that, oh, I always ask Allah to help us to, so that we get rid of this uh, regime, but he doesn't help, he doesn't listen. I say always to her that he has given us his guidance, the same thing that you said now, okay? He has done his part, it is up to us to do it. He's not going to do anything, okay? It is up to us to fight for it, okay? It, and he will not change this uh, Mullah's regime. We, we are the one who have to do it, okay? Yeah. So we have to rise up. And he has done his part. Yeah, it's exactly what I say, that he has done his part. He's yeah. not going to send a Superman to save us, okay? Okay. okay. All right, so I, I respect that. You, so you, you realize that that's a bit... Um, uh, and I'm not trying to debate you, you on it, brother. I'm, you know, it's, uh, you, no, it's I don't, problem. I don't, you know, you're my Muslim brother. I don't, you can believe how you want and, and so forth. But the, you, but the consensus is that Isa alayhi salat was salam, he will return before the day of judgment. I mean, that, that's uh, the vast majority of scholars and imams and, and so forth believe that that is, that is what will transpire based on the hadith. And you believe, you believe something differently. So, uh, um, Lately, 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 what we're, what we're seeing in in the world of uh, online dawah is that Muslims have begun to attack other Muslims because they may have a different of opinion, difference of opinion on certain topics or certain issues, and they begin to um, try to mock and undermine and ridicule and say these people are not in the fold of Islam and so forth. Uh, and I believe that Allah is going to judge us based on um, our understanding, our comprehension, and and so forth. Uh, he's going to judge us justly on the on the day of judgment uh, for for how we conceive things and how we uh, because we have different levels of intellect, different levels of un understanding, and so forth. I think it opens the door to um, to uh, instead of instead of condemning someone like I, I I don't feel any particular way in a negative way about you about how you you believe i may not totally agree with you about uh certain aspects most of what you said i totally agree with about islam being the answer and the solution and all the the the, the things that we're facing and all those things islam certainly has the solution i personally don't believe that the majority of people are going to embrace the truth um and i don't think it's going to be uh, i don't i don't think mankind has the ability to uh, as a whole to change these things before the day of judgment. That's my opinion. You have a different opinion. I, I would I would rather choose your opinion, uh, and in your your um, I would rather your your way of, of looking at it be what transpires. Uh, but I, I don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately. But uh, so I just want to make it clear that um, that you know the consensus is that Isa alayhi salat was salam, the son of Mary, peace be upon him and his mother, that he will return before the day of judgment. Um, and you have a difference of opinion about that, um, and that's that's fine. That's uh, um, you know I don't I don't want you to think I'm trying to debate you on the matter or anything like that. Someone is asking in the chat. Um, speaking of Visa, matter of fact, I see uh, uh, Baldy says, uh, "Where did you get uh, that from?" The, uh, it says, "Where did you get from which ayah in the Quran state the prophecy uh, that Prophet Isa?" Will not come back. Please give us the reference in the Quran. Um, I don't believe the Quran actually makes that declaration, but um, uh, I mean, yeah. Quran doesn't say anything about that. He he's coming back. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't say that. And then so I, I, I I will tell you, brother uh, brother Kenny, is that I don't have any problem with that. Uh, what you say about Jesus coming back, but uh, <clears throat> I say that this is uh, up to us to. Uh, uh, follow that his uh, his guidance and get rid uh, out of this jungle. After we get out of this jungle, he's welcome to come. Okay, we will say hello to him when he comes. So yeah, we, sure. don't have any problem. we don't have any problem if he comes in a peaceful, beautiful world that we have created. Because I just believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to send a superman to save us. Okay, mm -hmm. if yeah. he was going to send, uh, I would say to my mom, mom, wait. They will come. He will send a Superman to kill all these mullahs who are destroying uh, my country. Okay, killing daily people. You know, a few weeks ago they hanged a dead woman. Have you heard that, brother? They, Have you heard? They, they they hung a dead woman. She was already dead. She was going to be hanged with sixteen other men. 
She saw 16 other men who were hanged. She passed away. She got heart attack. And, and they still hung her. And they still hanged her, yes. Mm. Such a barbarian, okay? So we, we are, he, if this Superman was going to come, he should come now and save my people as well, yeah. save so many people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I say to my mom, he has sent us the prophet. He has shown us the guidance, okay? It is we who have to uh, go to, uh, through our, uh, that way. We have to go to, to that right way, Surat al Musnadim. okay? The, yeah. the, the way out of this jungle. He's not going to carry us, okay? This is the reason we are created, okay? That yeah. we finally get. And then I think, uh, brother, uh, this is uh, enough. Uh, maybe we okay. can talk another time, okay? You Just sure, sure. one thing I will tell you, try to ask those people who say Jesus is God or Son of God, try to ask them about the, the message, okay? How that message is going to save us. Doesn't matter if he's God or Son of God, okay? It doesn't matter if Ganesha is God or not. The message, this we are having these problems, what this Son of God can do for us. What is his message out of this jungle, okay? Just believing, just rules, doesn't help. Opium is haram, okay, but it doesn't help farmers of Afghanistan. They produce it because they need to feed their children, okay? Yeah. So to, to create a world for farmers of Afghanistan, like Swedish farmers, okay, is the solution. Not to say it is haram. Oh, believe in Allah. Oh, Allah will punish you in the day of judgment if you do this. No, that one is not the solution. The solution is what Swedish government has come, okay, with yeah. to help them so that they don't need to do this. Okay, and inshallah we talk. Uh, it's right. one, one last question. Someone's just asking yes. just a, a simple question. Yes, no saying, are you brother in, uh, that comes to some, sometimes the EF Dawa and SF, SD Dawa live stream? Sorry, once again? They're saying, are, are you brother Iksan that comes sometimes to the EF Dawa and SC Dawa live stream? No, I always no. come uh, by the name of Muji. Muji, okay, okay. All right, brother, thank you for coming, and uh, may Allah bless you for your efforts and your intentions. Thank and, you. Uh, inshallah, we'll have you on again. We'll have some more yes, discussions, inshallah. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you very All much. All right, brother, thank you for coming. May Allah bless you and your family. Assalamu alaikum. Um, okay, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. All right, so uh, may Allah bless the brother for coming on. Um, I want to stress, you know, the... Um, uh, the importance of not uh, criticizing and not uh, judging our Muslim brothers if they have a particular, a, a slightly different view from the norm. There's different schools of thought in, in Islam. And uh, um, and so I, I try to make it a, a, a priority not to try to ostracize and try to say that someone is uh, outside of the fold of Islam because they have a, a particular view on a certain topic. Yeah, alhamdulillah. You listen. Uh, only Allah is the all-knowing. All, all we can do is try to do our best in this life. And um, uh, I think the, bro the brother's uh, idea about um, uh, uh, what the solution is, obviously Islam is the solution. And uh, I think that he is correct. If we could, if, if humanity could embrace Islam the way we should, that we could, we could solve these issues ourselves. But uh, I personally don't think that we can do that. I think that uh, Isa, alayhi salatu salam, will return before the day of judgment, obviously to do a number of things. And, um, and so uh, let's uh, try not to, to judge anyone for their particular views and be too harsh. Uh, that's been happening a lot lately in the, in the uh, field of online Dawa where uh, people on different platforms are um, mocking and undermining and trying to belittle and discredit um, some of the Muslim scholars that are very well known um, and trying to, uh, you know, just totally discredit these these brothers that have done a lot of great work in the field of dawah and sharing the truth and the beauty of Islam with with people. So, um, but listen, uh, on on this platform we have a a disclaimer at the end and the beginning of the pla of the show that states that um, that I as the host and uh, any associates with the with the consider this TV don't necessarily agree with anything that any of the panelists say we may agree we may not agree but we're not held responsible for any position that someone takes but at the same time i'm not going to judge anyone for their belief and their opinion and so forth i don't think that uh, that's our our job as muslims i think um, we can try to try to uh, 
guide people in the best of uh, in our best effort to try to guide people in what we know. Um, but uh, again, um, people are going to be held accountable for what they believe in their their level of understanding and their comprehension and so forth. And so it's not for us to judge other people unless they're just blatantly doing something that's totally outside of the fold of Islam. And we have to correct that. Uh, that's we should certainly do this. So with that being said, uh, with that being said, I want to mention just briefly before we shut the show down that uh, this Friday I will be engaging a Christian George Bogue that I've discussed, had a few discussions with, uh, we're going to be discussing the topic is the God of the Bible, the God of the Quran. This is something he wants to talk about. And, um, so we're going to do that on, on this coming Friday, inshallah at nine thirty PM central standard time. It's a little bit late, but, uh, it's a Friday night. So alhamdulillah, we'll, we'll have that uh, discussion on Friday evening at nine thirty PM. And also, um, I will be debating Samuel Green, Reverend Samuel Green, on the topic of slavery, Christianity versus Islam, on March the 18th, Thursday, March the 18th, at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. That'll be uh, noon for people in Australia on the 19th. So they're 17 hours ahead. So that'll be uh, on the 19th for people in Australia at at noon. So uh, I see uh, Katie Muslim is 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 is. Uh, asking is incognito Islam your channel? Uh, no, brother, it's a sister channel, so that's uh run by a brother, um, um, Yaya Balik, and he's that's just a sister channel. We sometimes uh have live streams through that channel uh, as well as other uh platforms that we have live streams through, but uh, he's a he's affiliate, he's a associated with Consider This TV, so uh, so anyway, so thank everyone for watching. And I do bear witness there's no God other than Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his final servant and the seal of all prophets. Ashadu Allah, ilaha illallah. Ashadu Allah, Muhammad, and Abduhu wa Rasulu. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Listen, one last thing. We have the water well campaign that's going on. If you'd like to help people in communities throughout the world where water is hard to come by, and water is scarce, and they have very uh, poor water quality, maybe not any water at all, you can do so by uh, clicking on the uh, clicking on the link that I'm posting right now, uh, consider this TV water well projects uh, and donate under the launch good platform or the launch good uh, fundraising platform for these water wells built in Allah. So may Allah bless you for your efforts and your intentions and may Allah have mercy on each and every one of us on the day of judgment. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, peace be upon everyone and I will see you soon inshallah. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله